Well, it's wonderful and cold outside, so that's going to mean one of two things. Your heater core is going to be clogged, or your blower motor is going to stop working. So, time to break out the handy dandy multimeter and see what the hell's going on. So for me, let me turn the car on. The fan doesn't work. Doesn't matter what speed you're in. Shut up! I get it! So, no matter what speed you're on, we don't get a fan. Doesn't matter what we're on, what mode. What temperature, doesn't matter. She no worky worky. Now, this should not be confused with the fact that the air is not coming out of the vent that you think it should. So, if for instance, um, your air is blowing, but it's only coming out of the defroster, you have a vacuum issue, not a motor issue. For me, the fan does not do anything. So this is an electrical issue. So, let's find out what's going on. All right, so we checked out El Goog and found ourselves a wonderful little diagram. So this right here is the electrical uh, schematic for uh, the Jeep blower motor. It might, I'm, I'm not sure the exact year, but I think it might be, you know, maybe somewhere in the late 80s to 96. Not sure, <laughs> but this looks close enough to me. So over here we got the fuse block. Uh, this is a 30 amp fuse on mine. It's a 25 amp. I just checked this and the fuse is fine. So we go down the, uh, the line. We have a heat mode selector switch. I'm not really sure what that is. I think that's on the dash when you change the, uh, the temperature, not the temperature, the, uh, when you change it from the off position to a, a something else. That's probably what that switch is. I don't know where that's at. So we'll have to figure that out. And next we come down to our blower motor switch. So this is the dial that we actually move up and down. We got low. Uh, medium 1, medium 2, and high. So the way that this works is it goes through what's called a blower resistor, or the, the resistor pack here, and the final output is what goes to the blower motor and to ground. So the way this works, when you're in the low position, it actually doesn't go through the blower switch at all. What it does instead is go to the um, the very end of the blower resistor and goes through all of this. And this is what cuts down the voltage so that the fan moves slower. And then what you're doing when you're turning the switch on is creating uh, basically just a voltage divider and using less of the resistor pack. So on the, the medium one, you the voltage comes in here and then goes down here so it's cut down less. The second one, cut down even less. When you go on high, it actually skips the entire resistor and just sends all the power straight to the fan. So you can kind of see how this works, you know. Uh, if If the fan doesn't work on low, then um, it's probably not a switch issue. The uh, the blower resistor is probably just messed up. If it doesn't work on high, well, then we might have some other issue. And it could also be wiring. It could be something like a contact is burnt out or, you know, corroded. So we'll have to dig around and see what's going on. But I want to see uh, if we can look at the blower resistor and just see if we have power anywhere in that area. Okay. So we saw the electrical diagram. So the first link in the chain is going to be our fuse box. So if we look at the the second fuse to the left, right, our blower motor. For us it is a 25 amp. So we will check the continuity to make sure that she's not blown. You can also do a visual inspection, I just don't feel like pulling it. So you can like show. Take your multimeter here, see? Yeah. We're going to put it into what is called beep mode. It's continuity with sound. Beep, beep. And what we will do is we will put these leads across the two leads on the end of the fuse. They're actually metal, and you can get electrical contact from them. And we'll see if she beeps. Now, can I do this one-handed? I don't know. But you do what? Oh, teeth. I'm also doing this with the ignition off, just in case that plays a factor in the continuity check. They also make dedicated testers for this, but we got one and 
I can get it. Hey, okay. Our fuse checks out. So next what we could do is change this to DC voltage mode and see if we actually get power at both sides of the fuse. So for this, we will need a good ground. Uh, so maybe like a bolt or something that's sticking around. And uh, we'll see if we can get a good ground. And we'll measure the voltage. So power on. Wonderful buzzy noise. We'll turn this to high just in case. Okay, so I got the multimeter on max mode just so it holds its position. Uh, so I only got three volts. Now it could be that I was using a bad ground. So uh, I'll have to try and do some more digging, but I'm going to pull the fuse out and see if we get the same voltage on both sides, because we could be reading a short or something like that, or something close to a short anyway. So let's pull it and keep digging. Okay, so we are getting somewhere. So I pulled the fuse, and as you can see, our continuity check checked out. The fuse is okay. And when I measured the bottom terminal, okay, so the the one on the bottom, not the one on the top, we actually got 11.94 volts. Okay, so that means that we are getting voltage into the system. So something farther down the line is causing a bit of a holdup. So we gotta figure out what's going on. Okay, so the next easiest thing would be to check voltage all the way at the end of the circuit. So we can do two things here. One, make sure that we have 12 volts on our power side, and two, make sure that we have ground on our ground side. So in case you're curious, your blower motor is over here. This is on the passenger side of the engine bay. So we will we actually do this, put this in regular mode, and we will check. So we're gonna go red to orange and black to black. And hey, whoa, hey, come back. Look at that. All right, it's being a little stupid. But we have 12 volts going directly to the motor. Huh. So, that might just mean that our motor ceased. Well, that sucks. Um, so this motor is relatively new. And by relatively, I mean probably three or four years. Uh, but I actually just got the air conditioning working uh, as of this year. And on the last major trip, it was highway, um, the uh, air conditioner, like the drain, was not draining. I don't know what it was, but the water was just building up, so every time you took a turn, you could hear it sloshing and pouring onto the floor, and it was awful. So much moisture. So um, there's a good chance that maybe our motor is rusted out. Ain't that some shit. Hmm. Well, I thought this was going to be a blower resistor video, but uh, not the case. Hmm. That sucks. But anyway, I wanted to show it off just in case. If you come down here, the blower resistor is going to be in one of two places depending on your model year. Uh, for the older heads, it's, well, I mean, I guess they are pretty similar. But if you if you take this cover off, you got Phillips head screws, and we just slide back here. That wire connector right there is what I believe to be the um, the blower motor resistor. So you can see we got a bolt there and a bolt uh, there. And we can pull that and make sure that the resistor isn't completely blown out. And if you open up this flap, you can actually see the wheel in the back. If I could get you focused. It's uh, She's in there, you can see the, uh, the squirrel cage. So yeah, I guess the motor's seized. Or something. I don't know, I still kind of want to look at that resistor. Okay, I've got an idea. I want to try and uh, see if the resistor is working properly, so we can check this at the fan. So we will go positive to negative, and we will check each setting and see what we get. So, on high we are getting, if I could hold still, 11.76 volts. That is fine by me. That is nearly what was coming out of the fuse, so that means that our drop is pretty decent. So we're going to go to medium two and check the voltage. Still the same thing. Uh, so we might not get a voltage drop that well. 
Hmm. This is the tricky stuff. I don't know if it needs a load to actually show a drop. Let's just keep going. Hmm. Still the same voltage. That is rather annoying. Yeah, still the same voltage. Okay. So that was a bust. One final idea, though. Let's try turning it off. Okay, so it's off now. And let's see if we have voltage now. This should be testing that uh, that heat heat selector switch. Okay, excellent. That is what I like to see. So at least we can test that our switch is working, like the, the internal um, like on-off switch is working. But we can't test the uh, fan selector or relay, the, the resistor. So, screw it. I want to see inside. Let's take a look. Okay, so cover comes off. If you notice, the bottom one is just a slide, and the top is the only thing that holds it in. So just scooch it, and it'll come down. So now we can see that we have our flap over here for our uh, our uh, recirculator. So at least we know our vacuum connections are looking good. And this right here should be our blower resistor with some lovely corrosion. Oh, that is looking real nice, partner, real nice. So we've got two very small bolts. They're looking like a 10 mil or less. We might have to be careful um, trying to break this free. But uh, I want to see if I can get that out. Okay, so those bolts that hold the uh, blower resistor in are 7 millimeter. So that's a nice fuck you size. Um, also trying to get that back one out in between... Uh, the, uh, this vacuum actuator. Forget that. But anyway, I just wanted to take a quick peek, so you can see that uh, yeah, it's it's looking a little uh, a little meh, a little rusty. But uh, they are still all intact. Nothing's broken, from what I can see. The other thing you could do is try and do some uh, voltage checks. But yeah, considering it doesn't seem like this is my problem, I'm not going to fully take it out. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so since I throw literally nothing away, I still got my old blower motor right here. With uh, wonderful things on it. So, this one actually does kind of spin. I took this one out because it was making a bunch of noise and screeched like a banshee. But, Before we go through all the ch uh, all the trouble of pulling the motor and all that, we could plug it in and see if it chooches. Corn tact. Okay, well, yeah, that one don't work anymore. Okay, so we got our multimeter on resistance mode, and you can see that we're getting anywhere from like 200 to 250 ohms on the motor. So what we can tell from this is that the coil is not shorted out. So, you know, that's why we're not blowing a fuse, is because there's not a direct short. And if we were to come over to this guy and try to measure, I put this in the 4 million ohm range and did not get a reading. So what that tells me, is that the coil on this is broken because when I measure that we don't get anything. Absolutely nothing. So that's poop. Houston, we have liftoff. So that's what the problem was. The, uh, the fan was just seized. Like I said, there was a lot of moisture. So now you can see that thing's blowing. So what I did, uh, for some reason when I was flipping with the other uh, switches, they weren't working properly. So Two things to notice. First, this is a vacuum actuated system, and as such, it needs vacuum to work. So, if your car is off, then you're not going to have vacuum. That's why this vacuum ball over here is so important. Everyone that, you know, everyone that takes off their front bumper and goes, Oh, what's this crap? Let's delete it. It's like a battery for your vacuum. It holds, it's, it's a vacuum storage tank. So when your vehicle's off, you can actually use it. Now, obviously, it'll run out of vacuum, but, uh, yeah, that's what keeps it working. So, that was the first thing. So, I started the car, so it had vacuum, and, uh, finally got this flap to open. 
So this is our fresh, uh, th this is our recirculation flap. So to get that to open by itself, you can set it to max or you can set it to heat. For some reason it wasn't working on heat for me. But then, with the fan on, all I did was take this screwdriver and go in there and gently touch the, uh, the cage to get it to move. You want to make sure that you're ready to pull away because you don't want something to get caught in there and start spinning around. But yeah, you could see when you moved it, it would like, it would kind of flicker and like stutter. So you could tell it was stuck on, on like a commutator or something. So I just gave it a, a, a farther nudge and it, it clicked right on. So now we have high, medium two, medium one, and low. So let's see what happens when we turn it off and turn it back on again. So we are off. Hey, hey, look at that. The fan actually spins. Yay! All this time I've been without heat because something was just being stupid. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> uh, sorry this wasn't a replacement video, but this is more just a diagnostic to show you everything in the system. So I do have a blower motor replacement video if you'd like to see that. You just saw basically everything needed for the resistor. All you gotta do is unplug it and uh, put the new one in. So that's, uh, that's nearly covered. The only thing that hasn't really been covered is the selector switch and the switch over here. So it sounds like power is going through this. So if that switch, uh, it's common for the electrical connector behind it to get, uh, to get corroded or pull off or something like that. So yeah, check to make sure that the electrical connector here is good before you replace the switch. And that other switch, I don't know where it's located, but probably somewhere behind the dash. So yeah, if this is a problem, you're going to have to take this uh, this bezel cover off and unscrew some screws to get behind that. Or maybe, maybe slide the radio out and get behind the radio. Because it is open back there and you can just look straight down. But yeah, that's, uh, that's, a short and sh that's the short and sweet of it, of uh, why your blower motor may or may not be working. Hope you learned something.